Hi class, it's Bill with the continuation of the week 5 demo. We started in on a project that lets us use arrays of objects. We are trying to read data from a file, and which we have done and proved that we had successfully used a scanner object to grab things out of the file. So we learned about file objects and scanner in this way. Uh, we need to continue this though because we didn't store these things in objects yet, and we didn't store them in an array, and we still have other things to look about the debugger and understand that. So we have a couple of interesting things to figure out. The other thing that we haven't quite understood is how we're going to use the customer class. So let's take a quick peek at that. Remember we have no source code for that. We are given the bytecode and we uh, are hoping that we can get what we need out of that. So let's take a look at our project and remember here we have our object browser, class browser, and it's showing that main is uh, wanting to make use of customer, which is fine, but we have no source code. Now luckily the thing that comes to save us is javadocs. So notice now when I double click customer I get not the source code but the documentation view. So if you notice now we can look down and find out that customer has a constructor that lets us give the name, the age, and the balance and it's got some expected accessors like get age balance name, it's got a two string method, etc. So we can look down here and find all kinds of information about all of the methods and that gives us some pretty clear information about how to use the customer class. That is what happens when uh, somebody is a client, which we are here, of supplier code, right? So the supplier, in, in this case, is the customer class, and we are the customer of that, the client of that, and making use of it. You don't often get it. You're not get, getting source code because you're not supposed to have the source code. You're not supposed to change it. It's not yours. It belongs to somebody else. And this is typical even inside a company. You're supposed to be working on certain objects or certain methods and uh, other parts of the company are developing the other ones, you're not supposed to go in and mess with their stuff, so you're just consuming it. Luckily, Javadocs makes a difference. So this is one of the reasons that we have said over and over, make sure you use the parameters. You'll notice down here, it'll show us the parameters and give us very detailed information about that. It tells us what types, tells us what they are, it tells us what's returned, like everything is here that you need to consume this class. So that's uh, what, what really makes a difference here in us being able to use the customer class. So now back to our code, we want to now create these objects and we want to uh, prove that we can load them up with the data from the file. So let's just do that with a temporary one. Let's create a reference to a customer object. So how do we do that? We give the type and then we give it the name. Uh, I'm going to call it tempcust. So that creates a reference to a customer object, just a pointer, right? Now, to make it point at something real, we have to say new. We give it the object constructor, in this case customer, and we're going to call the constructor with the data that we're supposed to. And we can look at the documentation to figure out what's the order. We give name, then age, then balance. Cool. So I can provide name, then age, then balance in that order. So in theory that's all we have to do and we will know pretty quickly when we compile that that works. So that's kind of cool. It seemed to work fine. It seemed to allow us to create the object. And then just for fun we could start echoing back some of this data. Uh, we could just turn around and you know say hey can we echo back the uh, you know the age or whatever and look at the object. Now just for fun I'm going to put a kind of a silly line here because we know we need to be able to uh, stop and debug and I want to see the results of that line before we move forward on that. So I'm going to put continue. That basically is a, a, a word that uh, as in, as beginners you probably shouldn't be using much. Continue just says go back to the top of the loop. Just stop if you're in the middle of the loop and just go back to the beginning. So it's a kind of a way to you know to, to jump out and continue uh, from where you are but in this case it won't do anything because it's at the bottom of the loop. So it's just kind of a placeholder piece of code that won't do anything bad either. And I can put myself a note to do remove, right? I'll take care of that before the end. I don't really want it to stay in my code. Anyway, let us compile that and let's put a breakpoint right there and let's go make sure that the object was created and see whether it works the way we expect. So now let's run main and let's say OK. We get our debugger started. That's perfect. And if we look down at our local variables, let's give ourselves a little bit of room and we'll see that we have no static, no in other interesting instance variables for the main class. But down here, we see that we in fact have our uh, uh, 
data t you know the data that we had set aside and we have temp cust which is pointing to an object it's an object reference the cool thing about the debugger is I can double click that to dive in so I'm going to double click it and in fact it shows hey I have this temp customer variable uh, reference points to a customer object shows us up here and in fact here is the private data that that thing is holding right here's the age here's the balance here's the name in fact it even shows us what those private strings are which is fine so we can actually see what's in that customer um, object that we have created so cool debugger really helped us there without having to go do a bunch of silly prints and I'm going to just uh, continue let it finish up right in fact I'm gonna just uh, take off the breakpoint and then let it continue and finish its stuff so we can see that it runs to completion so that's great we have proved that we can store an object uh, we can create construct an object and we can point to it with a temporary variable but we need to do this with the array before we go beyond this point though, I'd like us to think a little bit about what this is going to look like. If we were to draw an object diagram, how can we represent this in a way that makes sense and helps our brain because the syntax gets a little bit crazy and we need to understand what we're dealing with exactly here. So what we need is we have these objects and they're going to contain, one of them is going to be for Johnny Quest Adams and here's one for Thomasina Jefferson. We're going to have these objects and they those references are going to be stored in an array. So this is going to be an array of references to customer objects. Right? That's what these things are. So zero, the zeroth element is going to contain this record and then the first element is going to contain this object, etc. So that's the idea here and so we're going to create this array of object references to customer objects and then we are going to create another reference that points at that array right a reference to this array and then the array is references to the objects does that make sense to you the interesting thing here is none of this is named except this guy here right the customer array that initial pointer right or reference to the array is the only thing that's got a name everything else beyond that is going to be referenced through our uh, methods on this side and through the array itself by its indexes so that's one thing to keep in mind sometimes drawing this picture out is a really useful exercise because you can get a mental picture as you walk through and understand the syntax of what everything is so now back to our code and let's see what we need to do to fix that alright so first thing is we need to create that array we're gonna take this line out but let's come up here and let's create the array we know how big an array we need because we've read in the customer count and we can go ahead and create the array remember that arrays are monolithic it's a it's a big chunk of contiguous memory that stores things that are alike you have to create it by giving it the size and you can't change that later you have some special methods that that are added as library functions to kind of help you if you need to make some changes but it doesn't actually change the array itself it actually copies all the data so we have to know this is unlike a list in Python or fancier things we'll learn later an array is a big block of memory in essence so we need all of that information uh, up front which we happen to know now let's look again what do we have to create we need to create a reference to an array of object references to customers so I know I'm going to create something that is going to be a customer array right so I'm gonna create this guy and it's gonna look like this we give it the data type it's gonna be customer and it's going to be called cust array and then we say hey look we're going to create this thing but really this is just a reference to an array of customers so this portion stop if you need to and think about it this part says create a reference to an array of customers but it doesn't point at anything yet it's a null pointer at this point if we just stop there we've got a null pointer so but now we need to actually point it at a real thing what do we need the thing to be the thing needs to be this guy we need to point it at an actual array that is the right size and the right type so I need to create a new object that object is going to be a thing that is going to contain customer references and how many of those references are there going to be 
there's going to be cust count of those references. So if you think about it, what we've done here is everything up to this point, if I were to delete these objects and put null on all of these pointers, that's in essence what we have done so far. We've created the reference to the array, we've created the array itself, it's ready to point at the right type of objects, but we haven't actually pointed it to any yet. They're all pointing at null, except for this guy. This is pointing at a real array. Now, in memory, we could already go and look at that. In fact, let's stop, let's compile it to make sure we haven't made any errors. Let's put a breakpoint here, and just for fun, let's go and look using the debugger to make sure that we are paying attention and we can see what the debugger can do for us. I've got a customer array. If I double click that, it shows that there are five of them, right? It's got room for five, and it shows 0, 1 through 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and here they're all null pointers. They don't point at anything yet. But everything is ready, right? Everything is actually working as we expect and ready to go. All right, so let's stop that and take off the breakpoint. Now, rather than creating these temp customers, let's see what we need to do. Instead of temp cust, what do we need to do? Well, we need to fill in the right part of the array. And what is the index that we need to work on? Well, we have a loop variable that maintains that. And that's called cust array index or sub cust. So in the cust element of the array, which is a, a reference a, array of references to customer objects. So in this particular reference, we're going to, instead of having a null pointer, we're going to point it to a newly created customer that is constructed thus. And now, to prove to you that we are actually doing it, we're going to compile it. Stop and pause the video and think about it. There was a whole bunch of concepts in this video to this point. So please stop and look at those things and go back and compare it to this diagram and make sure you understand how that conceptual model was implemented here and what every piece of syntax is. Okay, and then we'll, we'll continue. So stop if you need to. Okay, so I'm going to compile it. It works. I'm going to now run it. And we're going to stop and see. Sure enough, we have our customer array. Let's make sure we know where we're stopping. Yes, at the continue. I'm going to go look at this array. Notice that it's got the five, but this one, aha, it's not a null pointer anymore. It actually points at something. What is the thing it's pointing at? Ah, well, the zeroth customer, right? That's a customer class, so it's a customer object, and here's the data for that zeroth customer. Perfect, that's exactly what we think it ought to be, and these guys are still null because we haven't finished the loop. So I'm going to now come back here, take off the breakpoint, and in fact, I'm going to just for fun move it down here, and I'm going to come back to the debugger, and I'm going to continue. And then, once we get down here, I'm going to look at all of these guys, and notice they're all pointing at stuff, and if we look at every one of them, we can see, indeed, all of the data that we expect is, in fact, there. So notice now that the debugger is an extremely powerful way to go explore this data, way more useful than maybe we've understood before, because it lets you drill down into these things. Great, that's perfect. All right, a couple more things. Let's let this finish. Okay, so now we have stored all of these things. I'm going to take out this guy, which is my to-do. And now let's go prove to ourselves that we can get at the objects and by let's just dump all their names just for fun. So let's do a system.out.println customer names. Right? And then let's make a loop again. Let me set that up for us. Okay, so the same type of loop, but now let's dump out the name. So how do we do that? Well, we've got to think about how to drill all the way in from the outside all the way to the name. So how do we get to this guy? Well, obviously the name of the first thing, the only thing that we really have named until we get all the way down to the fields, uh, which actually we don't have fields, we have private data anyway, but we have methods. So until we get to that point, the only thing we have named is cust array. So we know we're going to have to system.out.println. So we know we're going to have to start with cust array. Now, how do I get to the element I'm interested in? I want to get to the element that's that's numbered by the, the loop counter, right? So I need to say, ah, well, I'm going to use the cust index array into the cust array 
index uh, array, right? So I'm using the cust cust to index into that array, and then what is this type, right? Got to stop and think at each time. What is the type of this object? The type of cust array sub cust is a reference to a customer object. Ah, so I have a customer object in my hand. So now I can call get name, right? So to get the names, this is how I drill down. Name of the array, index that I want, a dot, because now I'm at an object reference, a customer reference, and then I can call a method on the customer object, get name. So in theory, if everything has gone according to plan, I should now be able to run this guy, and we should be able to see names pop out. Super cool, there's all our customer names. So that seemed to work great. So now we could continue on and keep typing in different fields here. But wait a minute, do we really need to type all of these? Don't we have a toString method? Wasn't that provided? So instead of get name, can't I just do toString? And so we get all of the data for it. And so I can just say this is actually just, this is the customers, right? This is a list of all the customers. So let's just call to string, and maybe we'll get all the data magically, depending on what the provider, or the supplier in this case, what the supplier has given us for a to string method. So that compiles, that's great. Let's run it again and see what we get. Okay, where's our output window? Wow, look at that. So aside from a little you know, new line to separate them out, they've even provided a nicely aligned data, dollar signs, commas, right? They've done a pretty good job for us. So that's pretty cool. Well, actually we're not quite done because there's still another shortcut that we haven't taken advantage of. Remember, we've talked about this from the very first day, it is very common for all kinds of objects to know how to render themselves as strings. And Java knows automatically to look for two string methods in order to render things when it thinks a string is necessary for whatever reason. So watch the magic here. What if I just did this? Right? If I just call that, I say I want to print that element of it, it's going to say, hey, you have an array. I'm, I'm indexing into the array. I'm finding the cust element in the array. Hey, but that's an object. That's an object reference. So does that object have a two-string method? If so, I'm just going to call that for you. And then we can tack on the backslash n just for fun right, to get a new line. But watch how nicely that works with less code because we understand how toString works and how Java will automatically coerce things so nicely into that format. Wow, look at that. All the output and we didn't even really do any work to get it. So what can be better than that? So this takes us to the end of this particular concept. We've now finished everything we said we wanted to do. We read data from a file, we created objects, we put those into an array, we used a supplied class for which we didn't have source code, so we learned a little bit about the importance of Javadocs, and we used the debugger a whole bunch of times to do deep dives into our data structures to prove that everything was right. So that's a whole bunch of good stuff all in the week five materials. I hope that this is useful useful for you. You're going to need this stuff when you come to your next project, but I think this gives you a really good start at using all of these tools and putting some of them together in a usable way. Thanks for watching the video. Let me know if you have any questions, and we'll uh, hear from you on the forum or in email. Thanks.